Sample X contains lead, copper and an inert material. This following procedure was carried out to analyze lead and copper in this sample X. Now students, please try this question before continue. Question number 1. Calculate the mass percentages of lead and copper in X. Write balanced chemical equations where relevant. To calculate the mass percentages of lead and copper in sample X, we need to go through the given procedure. This sample X contains lead, copper and an inert material. Then, a mass of 0.285 grams of this sample X was dissolved in a slight excess of dilute nitric. Then, a clear solution was obtained. These two metals react with dilute nitric acid. Therefore, lead 2 plus ions and copper 2 plus ions are present in this clear solution. Next, sodium chloride solution was added to the resulting clear solution. A white precipitate Y was formed. When sodium chloride solution was added, these lead 2 plus ions react with chloride ions from sodium chloride and produce lead chloride. Lead chloride is a white precipitate. Therefore, this white precipitate capital Y is lead chloride. Copper 2 plus ions with Cl minus ions gives copper chloride, but copper chloride is a soluble compound. Therefore, definitely this white precipitate is PbCl2, lead chloride. Next, this sample was filtered and this white precipitate Y and the filtrate Z were analyzed separately. This is the analysis of precipitate Y. This white precipitate or precipitate Y, which is lead chloride, dissolved in hot water and a clear solution was obtained. When solid lead chloride was added to hot water, it dissolves and gives aqueous lead 2 plus ions and aqueous Cl minus ions. However, if you cool this sample, these two ions will be precipitated as lead chloride. The reverse reaction is for your additional information. But for this question, we need only this forward reaction. That is, solid lead chloride dissolves in hot water and gives aqueous lead 2 plus ions and aqueous chloride ions. Next, a solution of potassium chromate was added in excess and a yellow precipitate was formed. With the addition of this excess potassium chromate, these lead 2 ions reacts with chromate ions and this yellow lead chromate precipitate will be formed. Therefore, this yellow precipitate is lead chromate. Next, this yellow color lead chromate precipitate was separated by filtration and dissolved in dilute nitric acid. And an orange color solution was obtained. When this dilute nitric acid was added, the medium becomes acidic. In acidic medium, chromate ions converts to dichromate ions. Chromate ions are yellow in color and dichromate ions are orange in color. That is why the solution becomes orange in color. Therefore, this solution contains dichromate ions. Next, excess Ki solution was added to this dichromate solution and liberated iodine was titrated with 0.1 moles per cubic decimeter sodium thiosulfate solution and sodium thiosulfate required to reach the end point was 27 cubic centimeters. There are two reactions taking place during this step. The first reaction is between potassium iodide and dichromate ions in this acidic medium. 
The medium is acidic because of this dilute nitric acid. Therefore, the reaction is between dichromate ions and iodide ions. During this reaction, iodide ions oxidize to iodine while dichromate ions reduce to Cr3 plus ions. Therefore, this solution contains produced iodine and chromium 3 plus ions. But when sodium thiosulfate added, only iodine reacts with thiosulfate ions. Now we will go through that reaction. Iodine reacts with thiosulfate ions and produces iodide ions and tetrathionate. During this reaction, iodine reduces to iodide and thiosulfate ion oxidizes to tetrathionate. By doing a back calculation, we can calculate the mass percentage of lead. Concentration and the volume of sodium thiosulfate was given. Therefore, we can calculate the number of moles of reacted thiosulfate. Then, from this stoichiometry, calculate the number of moles of produced iodine. This iodine was produced by the reaction between dichromate and Ki, potassium iodide. Now, we will move to the reaction number 4. We know the number of moles of produced iodine and from this stoichiometry calculate the number of moles of dichromate ions. These dichromate ions were produced by the reaction between lead chromate and nitric acid. Therefore, move to the reaction number 2. We know the number of moles of dichromate ions. Then from this stoichiometry calculate the number of moles of chromate ions. These chromate ions comes from the dissolution of this white color lead chromate precipitate. Therefore, number of moles of chromate is the same as the number of moles of lead chromate precipitate. Therefore, from the number of moles of lead chromate, we can calculate the number of moles of lead 2 plus ions in this solution. These lead 2 plus ions are produced by the dissolution of lead in the solid example. Therefore, we can calculate the number of moles of lead in the sample and then number of moles can be converted to mass. Now we will move to the calculation. First, we will calculate the mass percentage of lead. If the number of moles of thiosulfate ions is x, according to the stoichiometry, number of moles of I2 is x divided by 2. Concentration and the volume of thiosulfate ions were given in the question. Therefore, we will calculate the number of moles of thiosulfate ions first. Amount of sodium thiosulfate is 0.1 divided by 1000 times 27 moles. The answer is 2.7 times 10 to the negative third. According to the stoichiometry, number of moles of iodine is the number of moles of sodium thiosulfate divided by 2. During the previous equation, we have calculated the number of moles of produced iodine. Those iodines are produced by the reaction between dichromate ions and iodide ions. Therefore, this number of moles of iodine is the same as the previously calculated number of moles. We will move to the symbols. Then that is x divide by 2. Then, according to the stoichiometry, number of moles of dichromate ions is one-third of this amount. Now, we have calculated the number of moles of dichromate ions. Then, according to the stoichiometry, number of moles of chromate ions is twice the number of moles of dichromate ions. Therefore, the number of moles of chromate ions is 2.7 times 10 to the negative third divided by 3 moles. We have calculated the number of moles of chromate ions from the previous equation. Those chromate ions are produced by the dissolution of lead chromate in dilute nitric acid. According to the stoichiometry, number of moles of chromate ions are the same as the number of moles of lead 2 plus ions. 
These aqueous lactoplasins are produced when dilute nitric acid was added to the solid sample X. During that reaction, solid lead converts to aqueous lactoplasins. Therefore, number of moles of chromate ion is the same as number of moles of lead to plus ions and it's the same as the number of moles of lead. Therefore, number of moles of lead equals 2.7 times 10 to the negative third divided by 3 moles. Now, we need to calculate the mass of lead. Mass equals number of moles times molecular mass. Therefore, mass of lead equals Number of moles of lead that is 2.7 times 10 to the negative third divided by 3 moles times molecular mass of lead that is 207 grams per mole. Therefore, mass of lead equals 0.1863 grams. Mass percentage of lead equals mass of lead divided by the total mass times 100%. Therefore, mass percentage of lead equals 65.368%. Now, we will move to the analysis of filtrate Z. Aqueous copper 2 plus ions were present in this filtrate. Then, this filtrate was neutralized and excess amount of Ki was added to it. Aqueous copper 2 plus ions react with iodide ions and produce copper 1 iodide which is a white precipitate and iodine. This same reaction can be written as copper 2 plus with iodide produce copper plus 1 ions and iodine. Both equations are correct. Next, this liberated iodine was titrated with 0.1 moles per cubic decimeter sodium thiosulfate solution. The volume of sodium thiosulfate required to reach the end point was 15 cubic centimeters. Iodine react with sodium thiosulfate and produce iodide ions and tetrathionate ion. Concentration and the volume of sodium thiosulfate were given. Therefore, first we can calculate the reacted number of moles of sodium thiosulfate. Then, using this stoichiometry, we can calculate number of moles of liberated iodine. Now, we can move to the first equation. Number of moles of liberated I2 was calculated. Therefore, using this stoichiometry, we can calculate the number of moles of copper 2 plus ions. These copper 2 plus ions were produced when solid sample X dissolved in dilute nitric acid. Therefore, from this number of moles, we can calculate the number of moles of copper present in the sample X. Next, number of moles of copper can be converted to the mass using molar mass of copper. And finally, mass percentage of copper can be calculated. Now, we will move to the calculation process. Number of moles of thiosulfate ions equals 0.1 divided by 1000 times 1.5 moles. The answer is 1.5 times 10 to the negative third. If the number of moles of sodium thiosulfate is x, according to the stoichiometry, number of moles of iodine is x divided by 2. Therefore, number of moles of iodine equals 1.5 times 10 to the negative third divided by 2 moles. Number of moles of liberated iodine is x divided by 2. According to the stoichiometry, number of moles of copper 2 plus ions is twice this amount. Therefore, number of moles of copper 2 plus ions is x moles. This stoichiometry is same for the second equation as well. You can use either first equation or the second equation. Therefore, number of moles of copper 2 plus ions is twice the number of moles of iodine. Number of moles of copper 2 plus ions is 
twice the number of moles of iodine. Therefore, the number of moles of copper 2 plus ions is 1.5 times 10 to the negative third moles. Copper 2 plus ions are produced when the solid sample X dissolved in dilute nitric acid. In that case, solid copper converts to copper 2 plus ions. Therefore, number of moles of copper 2 plus ions is the same as the number of moles of copper. Therefore, number of moles of copper equals 1.5 times 10 to the negative third. Mass equals number of moles times molecular mass. Therefore, mass of copper equals number of moles of copper that is 1.5 times 10 to the negative third times molecular mass of copper that is 63.5. Therefore, mass of copper equals 95.25 times 10 to the negative third grams. Mass percentage of copper equals mass of copper divided by the mass of solid sample x times 100%. Therefore, mass percentage of copper equals 33.42%. Question number 2. What is the color change at the end point in the titration carried out in the analysis of precipitate Y? Initially, acidic medium dichromate ions were present. This solution was appeared in orange color and with the addition of excess potassium iodide, these dichromate ions react with I minus O iodide ions and converts to Cr3 plus, chromium 3 plus ions and iodine. Therefore, this solution contains aqueous iodine, chromium 3 plus ions present in acidic media. Then, starch was added as the indicator. After the addition of starch, this solution turns to blue color because starch and iodine forms a dark blue color complex. Therefore, after the addition of starch, the color of this mixture or the initial color is blue. When the titration carried out, thiosulfate ions react with iodine and produce iodide ions and tetrathionate. After the titration, this mixture contains iodide ions, chromium 3 plus ions and this tetrathionate ions. Tetrathionate ions and iodide ions are colorless. Therefore, final color of this solution is because of the presence of chromium 3 plus ions. Chromium 3 plus ions gives a green color in the presence of acidic media. Therefore, the color change is blue to green. This is the answer for the question number 2.